A very good afternoon and welcome to our Celtic Spirituality Reflection from St Michael at the Northgate Church in Oxford. And we are in the tower room of our church, the base of our Saxon tower, and felt to be the oldest room in Oxford. It's always a privilege to be here and to sit here, to chat in here and to pray in here. And if any of you are ever visiting Oxford or you haven't been into the tower or the tower room and you'd like to, then you'd always be very welcome. And so we remember we travel together, mindful of the enfolding love of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And from Psalm 125, as the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people both now and forevermore. Circle me, Lord, keep protection near and danger afar. Circle me, Lord, keep hope within, keep doubt without. Circle me, Lord, keep light near and darkness afar. Circle me, Lord, keep peace within, keep evil out. Verses from Psalm 147. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant and fitting to praise him. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars and calls them each by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. Reminder that whenever we feel broken hearted, the Lord brings healing. Whenever we know we are, we are wounded, the Lord can bind up our wounds so they become healed and are protected. In that wonderful verse, he determines the number of the stars. And if we look out on a starry night, light pollution permitting, of course, in those days, they'd be able to see so clearly. And even now in that part of the world, more clearly than in some parts of England. Uh, the sky full of stars, and the Lord knows the number, and he calls them each by name, in the same way that he knows the number of hairs on our head. And his understanding has no limit. There will be, a time, there will be times when we perhaps don't feel we understand all that's going on, but our God understands everything. His understanding has no limits. To the words of our creed, and again we use the version used on the island of Iona. We believe in God above us, maker and sustainer of all life, of sun and moon, of water and earth, of male and female. We believe in God beside us, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, born of a woman, servant of the poor, tortured and nailed to a tree man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. He died alone and forsaken. He descended into the earth to the place of death. On the third day he rose from the tomb. He ascended into heaven to be everywhere present throughout all ages and his kingdom will come on earth. We believe in God within us, the Holy Spirit burning with Pentecostal fire, life-giving breath of the church, spirit of healing and forgiveness source of all resurrection and of eternal life. Prayer of blessing from the church in Nigeria. In thy journeys to and fro, God direct thee. In thy happiness and pleasure, God bless thee. In care, anxiety or trouble, God sustain thee. In peril and in danger, God protect thee. From the Celtic tradition. Bless to me, O God, the earth beneath my foot. Bless to me, O God, the path whereon I go. Bless to me, O God, the things of my desire. Thou evermore of evermore, bless thou to me my rest. Today the Church remembers Mary Ramabai. And she was born in 1858, 
the daughter of a Sanskrit scholar, and she firmly believed in educating women. Uh, she was Indian, she converted to Christianity, but was determined to keep in touch with many aspects of her, uh, her Hindu background and tradition. She started to lecture on social questions and she became the first woman to be awarded the title Pandita. And she was, as I said, so committed to educating women and indeed orphans and educated, founding schools and homes. She lived in great simplicity and was a prominent opponent of the caste system and of child marriage. And she died on this day in 1922. I got that information from this wonderful book, Exciting Holiness. And if ever any of us are interested in the church's year, and as it says, colics and readings for the festivals and lesser festivals of the calendars of the Church of England and one or two other churches too, I commend that to us. Exciting Holiness. And just that reminder of the worldwide church and also this particular, this lady so committed to the education of children and the education of other women and the opponent of any system that created prejudice and oppression. And so our second Bible reading for tonight is from Second Timothy. This is how it begins. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, according to the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dear son. Grace, mercy and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve, as my forefathers did, with a clear conscience, as night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers. Recalling your tears, I long to see you, so that I may be filled with joy. I have been reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. For this reason I remind you to fan into the flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Grandmother Lois and Mother Eunice doing their best to look after Timothy and to ensure he grew up with good knowledge of the scriptures. Timothy was fortunate at a mother and grandmother who would be willing to help. Mary, Mary Ramabai would also look after those who were less fortunate, the orphans, and how pleased she would have been, and of course she would have known these words well, to hear of a young child being grown up in the faith, understanding of the scriptures, and Mary Ramabai did translating as well and how pleased she would have been with the example of Lois and Eunice helping that next generation. But it seems that Timothy was a little timid or possible, or possibly so. We might be reading too much into this in that Paul feels that he has to say, remember the gifts that you've been given and don't be overcome by a spirit of timidity, but use those gifts well, which was given to you by the laying on of hands. And remember that God gives us a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. So whatever it may, be, be, may have been that troubled Timothy, uh, perhaps a little area of his life not quite in control, Paul says, remember, you have been given the spirit of self-discipline. You do have the power to exercise that by the grace of God. So this day, may we remember all those who work so hard to bring up the next generation in faith and understanding of the scriptures. We are thankful for the example of Mary Ramabai, of her commitment to scholarship and to teaching, and also her example in living a simple life. May we learn from her example, and may we be thankful for those who have blessed us. so to our final prayer. 
May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face, the rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Thank you so much for joining us this evening on our website it explains our services in person and streamed on Sunday and look forward to seeing you either on screen or in person before too long but thank you for joining us tonight.